everybody. Thank you for being with us. I'm Rebecca Hyland and welcome to Groundwork. I am running for the state representative seat of the 90th district, which is a large portion of Wallingford and Middlefield. And I have with me Liz Linehan, state representative for the 103rd House District, and I would like to say thank you so much for giving us this time, especially as campaign season is kicking off. Thank you for having me. This is really fantastic. And you are running again? I am. I'm running for my fourth, ter fourth term. Fourth term. Mm -hmm. I had to think about it. So when did you first uh, become a state representative? Uh -huh. So this is really a funny story, and it, I feel like now um, you're Barbara Walters, <laughs> and I'm opening up on your very first question. Oh. I'm going to tell you some good stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm an open book. Um, I first ran, actually, in 2012, and the way that happened was, I believe it was Connecticut had just legalized um, same-sex marriage, and I wanted to become a justice of the peace. So I Googled. Uh, and I learned how to become a justice of the peace. It's not easy. It can only happen during a presidential election year. You need to be nominated by your party. I mean, it's like, you know, it's not easy. I wouldn't but think I'll, it'd be that complicated. It is. <laughs> so I said, okay, I, you know, I've never talked to my party chair. I'll call him up. And I left a message and I said, this is who I am. You know, this is why I want to do this. Can you please nominate me? So not 10 minutes went by and he called me back and he said, I'm willing to nominate you and um, the convention is tomorrow night. You just got in just under the wire, but we don't have anybody to run for state rep for the 103rd district. So we want to put you in as a placeholder. He's like, don't worry about it. We'll find someone to take your place, no problem. And I, was, and I said, well, okay, you know, whatever I can do to help, right? Naturally. Um, and I thought it was hilarious. I called my husband, who was at work, and I said, you're never going to guess. In order to be, you know, a justice of the peace, they now want me to be a placeholder to run for state rep. Isn't that the funniest thing you have ever heard? And my husband was like dead silence on the other end of the phone. And he said, no, that's not stupid. You were born for this. This is everything you've wanted to do. You just didn't know you wanted to do it yet. And I thought about it, and he was absolutely right. I mean... You know, I had him come uh, to D.C. with me and, and really advocate for the things that were important to us uh, before we got married. You know, I, um, I've i been openly loud about the things that I care about. I was a heck of an armchair quarterback, so I realized, hey, maybe, maybe this is something I should do. And I did it. I went to the convention and I said to the chair of the party, I will only allow you to put my name in as long as you make me the real candidate. That was a quick decision. Mm -hmm. That was like uh, 48 just, hours. You just got to do it. You just got to <laughs> do it. And I had the support of my family. They said, yeah, sure, let's do that. And then about um, three weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. Wow. Yes. And now this is a very true story. I was pregnant and I was trying to hide it um, and I was knocking on doors and knock, knock, knock and a woman opens the door and I'm not even kidding you because this will never happen to me again no matter how long I stay in office. A woman opens the door with a frying pan and a fish was in the frying pan and had the two eyes looking straight up and she was smoking a cigarette oh. and she said, how can I help you? And the smells from the fish and the cigarette and I vomited all over her doorstep. And that's when I had to tell the world I was pregnant. Yes, so you were going to have to explain that one way or another. Yeah, I don't think I got her vote. No, are you? You yeah, never know. <laughs> oh, but we were trying to get, you know, uh, uh, we had our waters and trying to. And I, that's when I had to admit to everyone I was indeed pregnant. But what happened there is once I admitted that I uh, was pregnant, the then Speaker of the House, Brendan Sharkey, took away all of the House Dems' help because he thought I couldn't possibly win if I was pregnant. I wouldn't be able to knock doors, uh, and so he took away all of my help. And that was the impetus for the um, pregnancy protections bill that we passed when I did get elected in 2016. One wow. of the first bills I passed in 2017 was pregnancy protections and accommodations in the workplace. Exactly. I did not know that. Yep. That it, well, thank you for passing that. 
<laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, for breastfeeding moms, you know, and um, for pregnant women. And it was really helpful in that um, it started a conversation where people didn't realize that when you ask for accommodations, it really isn't that difficult to provide them. And I think that there was um, a belief that anytime you ask for accommodations, it's going to cost the business money. It means right. time off. It might mean a different chair. It might mean to have your office where you don't have to walk up the stairs. Right. A lot of different things. Um, and so since we passed that, I've heard not only from pregnant women, but also from business owners who are glad that we provided those protections. When you think about it, when you make people happier in their workplace, they become more productive yeah. and therefore more profitable. Absolutely, 100%. And it's a win-win. But people, when it comes to change, if it's not spelled out for them as to what it's going to look like, right. there's a fear, and, it, and then they think the worst. So um, as you'll find out when you are state representative, when you write legislation that does in fact make change, uh, it's very important to spell out what that change is going to look like and what it's going to mean for someone, whether that is a business, whether that is an individual, your constituent, whomever. It's just important to really say this is the vision.